the biggest track in the world has finally come to ACC. The Nordschleife has arrived, or if you want to say it properly, the Nordschleife. But uh, anyway, thank you to Kunos for sending me this shirt, because they've sent me a shirt with their logo on it and my name. Well, not my birth name, but you know, my my name. So thank you to them for that. That arrived yesterday very timely with the update. And uh, thank you to them as well for sending me the track early so I can make this video and give it a go. Early access. So thank you for that. And uh, what else do you need to know? You need to know that it's the most recent laser scan version of the Nordschleife. So in theory, it should be the most immersive version of that track sim racing can offer. So that is interesting. Uh, offline, you can have up to 50 cars. Online, you can have 110. So there will be some very interesting races coming up on, say, you know, low fuel motorsport and places like that, which hopefully I can do a few of, because, yeah, that'll be insane. 110 cars around that track. Damn. Damn! And there's no other new content with it. It's just the track. So there's no new cars and no other new tracks. But, yeah, I mean, that's all we wanted, right? We, all we wanted was a Nordschleife. So that's enough from me. Enjoy the video. We'll do some hot lapping, some racing. We'll give it the once over and see how good it is. Enjoy. All right then, so we're going to go and do a hot lap of the Nordschleife, but before we do that, I'm going to quickly show you the setup I used for it, and it's just a nice little setup that will get you started in the Merc. It's a, a setup I used at other tracks, but I don't know if it's any good at this track. Obviously, the Nordschleife is very different to most circuits. It's very drivable. It's a little bit understeery. Um, so yeah, I think the key thing would be to try and dial out that understeer. No idea if max wing or minimum wing at the Nordschleife is the best way to go. Needs some testing, but yeah, that's the setup. Let's get into the lap. So we're on the outlap and good news for everybody involved, including myself, we can use the cut through to do the next lap, to start your next lap. We don't have to do the full outlap of the Nordschleife before you go on to the next lap. It doesn't invalidate your next lap. It's a lifesaver. Obviously, it's not as quick as getting the full run up if you were to go around the full track. You get probably a, a, a two tenth head start going down to turn one but it does save you seven minutes of outlap. So um, yeah, very good that you can do that. Obviously they do that in real life as well in qualifying sessions. So for the first section, obviously we're using the new layout and it's a very tight left-hander there. So I did go down to first gear and used all the track on the exit. Yes, yeah, so it, it's not a very nice section that first bit compared to the, the GP layout where you go through turn two, turn three, turn four. I prefer that layout, but it's something a bit different. And then obviously we know this section very well, the left and the right. They're just, especially in the Merc, all about trail braking and, and just getting on power gently so you don't get that kick of oversteer, which is very common in the Merc. Going down to this very tight right-hander at the bottom of the hill. Again, we know this section very well. It's, it's something we've done before. It's just about keeping it nice and tidy and preparing yourself for what's coming next. So the Schumacher S here, we did actually get out the throttle a lot there. Uh, had a bit of understeer, so not particularly quick through there, but the lap so far is okay, pretty tidy. And the lap in, in general, to be honest, is, is fairly tidy. There's definitely time in it. And when you've got a lap that's basically over eight minutes long, you're always going to finish it thinking, damn, there's at least a second or two seconds in that lap. Um, yeah, it's not like your standard track where you've got a couple of tenths here and there. It's, there's always a lot of time on the table. Approaching the chicane, They've introduced a really uh, brand new curb here on the left, that yellow curb, an absolutely enormous sausage curb. And um, yeah, I don't know if that's a realistic thing. I don't know if that's in real life, but yeah, you saw there we got a massive bump over it, so we didn't quite catch it correctly. But anyway, that is enough of the GP loop, the bit we know. Let's go on to the bit we don't know, the brand new bit for ACC, the Nordschleife. And going down the hill then for this right, big lift just to get it through without running wide into the grass approaching this really fast section and then you've got a left right quite tight twisty section coming up all about just setting the next corner up staying ahead of the game don't don't get the car out of position for the next corner we don't use enough curb there you can actually use more curb than that second gear for this bit and then down to second after going up to third again late apex probably use a bit more curb there but overall neat and tidy kept it on the tarmac and we live to carry on with the lap so up this uphill section right hander coming up you do have to lift here i didn't downshift but just a little lift because yeah the understeer was quite bad in in this car in this setup um but it was quick enough through there so it's a very tight track anyway so if you do get it that little bit wrong there's no runoff you know you're, you're onto the grass which you have no grip on and then you're into the barrier so this fast left you can see we hold it in sixth the suspension has a bit of a weird moment there where it sort of just bugs out and we almost understeer onto the grass, but we did just manage to hold it. And yeah, second gear for that right is very, very 
quick entry to that corner, but yeah, we managed to get it stopped down to second gear. Plowing down this downhill section then, nice and easy flat in a GT3, and this uphill left, down to fifth, use all that curb just to rotate the car, down to third for this right, and it's all about being patient here and just setting up this left because it's a really tight left-hander, so you have to, you don't want to go in too hot, otherwise you'll be very much out of position for the right and you'll lose a lot of time. So nice and tidy through there, not too bad. Going down this bit, a little straight towards the right-hander where you do have to downshift, I think, in this car because, yeah, it's, uh, it's tighter than you think. We do actually run a bit wide there, so we probably lose a little bit of time. Down to second gear for the left, flat through the right, up to third. Use all the track on the exit, downhill, second gear, trail brake, wait, be patient, pick up the throttle, and there you go. This next left is very tricky. You think it's flat. It could probably be flat if you nail the setup, but I did have to have a little blend of the throttle there just to make, make the corner. Uh, this long, it's like a, it's like turn eight at Istanbul, that corner. You've got about three or four different apexes there. Into this very tight left. I would, uh, by the way, I don't know corner names. I don't know corner numbers. There's too many to remember. So I'm just, I'm just making this sound like a very simple hot lap right now, but there's nothing else I can do really. So again, did that bit nice and tidy. Down to second gear for the left, pick up the throttle and you can sort of run the car at wide. Get it to the left though, because there's a right-hander coming up. We missed the apex a little bit there, but you can really pin the throttle early there because it's uphill and the exit's probably, that, that, that bit of track's a bit wider than you think. So this left kink is easy flat. Break of the black marker board on the right. Down to second, we do miss the apex there. We probably break a little bit too late there, but you can get on the power super early again. And then you've got this uphill section, which yeah, is uh, extremely long. You know, th this is where, this is another section of track which makes me think, is minimum wing going to be better? Because obviously it'd be flat out minimum wing or maximum wing. Um, and obviously you've got the back straight as well. So there's a few sections that make me think maybe lower downforce is the way to go. But for the sake of the video and drivability, I just put max downforce on for the minute. I mean, there are over 100 corners, so maybe max downforce is quicker overall. Um, so yeah, that fast left, we do do that quite nice. You have to lift quite a lot there and for that fast right as well. Just a little lift just to make the corner because otherwise you will just understeer wide straight into the barrier which yeah when you're five minutes into a lap you don't really want to throw it away because it does feel like a waste of time going to probably the most famous corner on the track the carousel where we're going quite hot we make sure we stay on the banking and then we're just keeping a little bit of throttle on just to keep the minimum speed up throughout the corner and then you're sort of waiting for that exit and then as soon as you see the exit you pin the throw and hope the the rear sticks that left is just about flat down to third for this left right and you've got to be patient here because if you get on the power too early you will just run onto the grass and hit the barrier down to second for the right this next section is really really fun and for those of you that know it it's just all about rhythm and as I said earlier, staying ahead of the game. Make sure you don't overshoot one corner, because if you if you overshoot one corner, you're out of position for the next corner, then the next corner, and it just it, it gets worse and worse. So it's all about just not over pushing, staying ahead, staying ahead of the game. And you can see we did it okay there. Um, we're probably driving fractionally under the limit because we don't know it that well in ACC at the minute, and we're not fully comfortable with the setup. For this next right, uphill right, down to second, and you could probably use more track on the exit there, which we don't do down to second to the left you probably turn in here earlier than you think and then straight line the exit over this curb and you've got this flat out section here it's just about flat out down into fourth gear but then this bit huge drop off in the in the track you actually get some air there and this next bit is all about setting up the left so keep the car to the right hand side this next left again the track falls away from here and the car does go airborne but you can get it flat if you position the car in the right way keep it to the left hand side for the right and Again, staying ahead of the game, because there's just so many corners to think about. You can attack this bit quite hard and aggressive, down to third gear, second gear for the left, and then let the car run out wide, use a bit of curve on the exit. Again, this is a little bit like the carousel with the, the change in um, track material, it's, it sort of turns the wood there. And uh, yeah, it's just all about keeping the minimum speed up through there. This fast right, again, with the understeer, you have to lift quite early to then get a good exit. Because if, if you do it the other way around and you go in quite hot and then you have to lift very late in the corner, it's going to hurt you down this entire straight, probably the biggest straight in ACC. I'm pretty sure this is longer than the Paul Ricard one. So yeah, a huge straight. It is uphill, so you don't get the top speed you probably should do. Um, but you're still definitely getting over 280Ks come the end of it. So approaching the bridge, and as I say, it's been a tidy lap. I'm sure there's seconds in the lap in driving and setup 
and people, you know, as people start to exploit the track and find the, the optimal lines and stuff like that, there'll be a lot, there'll be times much quicker than this. This left right's flat and then you have to brake super late. We have a big moment there uh, approaching the entry to the corner. Use a bit of curb there and then, yeah, it wasn't a tidy last section there, but it was, it was committed enough and approaching the line then we're going to do an eight minutes 13.3 so yeah i have no idea if that's good bad or horrendous but i'm sure there will be plenty of laps quicker than that but yeah that is a hot lap of the nordschleife so it gives you somewhere to start it's an amazing track to drive but i think in terms of lapping that's probably us done i think let's go into a race right in the rig Ready to go, 50 cars on the grid at the Nordschleife. I'm gonna quickly load my setup. Made a little one just before I jumped on. So I'll quickly flick through it so you can try it yourself if you want somewhere to start, if you're using the Mercedes. 43 liters of fuel for uh, three laps, I think it's gonna be is excessive, but that's the nature of the Nordschleife. Very soft mechanical grip. I thought that might help with the bumps and the curbs. We'll see, we shall see on that, but and I also went for max wing just because it was a trade-off. Obviously, there's the really long back straight and the, there are some really long flat out sections, but there's over 100 corners. So I don't know overall what's the better way to go about it. I think for the sake of the video, having it drivable was quite important. So I've gone for max wing, um, but maybe for pure lap time, lower wing might be better, but need some testing to be honest. But let's get into it. 20 minute race, as I say, should work out at about three laps. We're starting last out of 50 cars. 50 cars was the maximum I could put offline. I think online you can go up to 110. So there'll be, there'll be some pretty interesting races online, no doubt, but we're gonna start last on this offline one, 50th. How far up can we get? And can we survive? I mean, I've done a handful of laps just to get warmed up because this is uh, the hardest track in the world. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm not even confident I can keep it on the road three laps in a row around here, let alone with 50 AI. So let's give it our best shot. Some heat into the brakes. I've got the graphics maxed out. As you can see, you can see every single car on the grid. So my CPU is definitely, um, it's definitely not well, but hopefully it survives. So yeah, 13 litres a lap, I think, I think that's enough fuel. Now we should get the green flag here as we're in the final corner, which is not ideal, but maybe we should get a good run here. Wow. Well, yeah, that, that is a good start. Now the AI should break super early for turn one, as they usually do, so we're going to be greedy here and just make up as many spots as we can. Get shoved onto the grass. How much damage we pick up there? 0.6 of damage, it's not too bad. I will take 0.6 of damage, given how many cars we've ever taken there. It's good progress. Very good. Oh, little. Well depended, to be fair, with the Ferrari. Obviously, we're on the uh, the bit of the track we know quite well, the GP loop. But we'll shortly be going onto the Nordschleife a bit, which I don't know as well. So that's when it's going to get very interesting. So I think we're about 19th. That's a really good start. They've also introduced a huge curb on the um, on the chicane. You can see here this big yellow curb. You don't really want to be taking that too much. I get two positions here. Oh, just the one. Right, here we go. 
Let's try and survive this. It'd be good to see sort of how quick the AI are as well. I mean, the AI are set to 100. Oh no, that's a mistake. It's very hard to concentrate and drive around this track. Yes, so the AI are set to 100 skill level and 100 aggression, so they're maxed out. So it will be good to see how quick they are around here. I mean, they look pretty quick in that last section, but I did make a huge mistake. Still 0.6 of damage, okay. Right, let's try and keep up with them. Ooh, big moment there. They do seem very quick. Blimey. Bit of a memento. Well, we caught them a little bit there. That's good. So, yeah, the clock should hit the checkered flag halfway through our third lap. It's about eight minutes a lap round here in the GT3. Oh. This is where I'm trying to reach deep within my memory to figure out where I go next. I'm not really that experience around the Nautilus Life Runner Sim. I don't, I've not done that much of it. Enough of it, but, you know. It takes a lot of brain power to remember where I'm going. Car on the right. Clear on the right. Oh, we got that done. It's good. Where are we now, then? 18th. I don't know if this is on or not, but it's a good start. Keep on having these moments. A bit too aggressive on throw. Right, so we're getting a nice toe now. That Merc power coming in clutch. Oh, that's going to be a big shun. Just Porsche doing. Oh dear. Please don't kill me. I mean, I'm not going to. What was that? At least we survived. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Any damage? Four seconds of damage. Okay, that's not ideal. Into the carousel for the first time. Probably need to turn my force feedback down for that, I think. Four seconds of damage should only really be cosmetic, so it shouldn't really make any difference to our pace. My brain is in overload. So is my CPU as well. But we're keeping up with them though, that's good. It'd be a very embarrassing video if they just gapped me. This is a really bumpy bit. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, I forgot this bit's really bumpy as well. I mean, so many sections around here are just like... Oh my god. What just happened there? Might have to pit for repairs. Yeah. I think my rear wing is severely broken. Oh, it's helped my understeer a bit, though. Wow. Yeah, let's box for repairs. Don't need new tyres. Don't need fuel. Just fix. So it's 46 seconds. I wonder where we are now, though. Probably like, what, fifth? Big traffic jam, look, you can see on the map, they, they ain't going anywhere. Yeah, let's, let's box. I'm not going to do two laps with a broken car. Good old AI, eh? Idiots. The lot of you. you ruined my video. So this is basically now turned into a test session. So I don't really know what happened there, but as I was talking about before the crash, that section and the section just before where you basically go airborne, so sketchy. I mean, I can't imagine it's like that in real life to that extent. I think what ACC does is it exaggerates bumps and curbs quite a lot. That's why I noticed that with the tracks I've raced on in real life, like Spa or Alton Park, the bumps in ACC are like 10 times worse. So I think around a bumpy track already, the Nordschleife, it's even it's exaggerated even more in the game. And uh, it does make it quite tricky to drive, to be honest. But... A park. All right, so the video is not going well, but we can still use these next two laps to really enjoy the Nordschleife, the Nordschleife from a driving point of view, a driving experience. So, as I was saying, it's clearly laser scanned. Uh, it's a very late or a very recent rendition as well uh, in terms of when they laser scanned it. So, it's an up-to-date Nordschleife. It looks awesome. As I say, the bumps and the curbs do feel a bit excessively aggressive. But, you know, someone who's driven the Nordschleife in real life will, I guess, be able to confirm that. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's the case. Um, and obviously, it's, you know, arguably the best track in the world. It probably is the best track in the world in terms of just... Wow, that curve is brutal. And, yeah, obviously a lot of hype going into this DLC. You know, the Nordschleife is something everyone who plays ACC has wanted for a long time. Some people... You know, there were points where you were wondering where you're actually going to get it. And, you know, I think Kunos, you know, they always deliver in terms of the DLC they put out is quality stuff. So, you know, no complaints. It's 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 a good, really good rendition of the Nordschleife. So I would just say it's a little bit bumpy. But maybe someone who's driven in real life can confirm it is this bumpy, but I'm pretty sure it's not. So in the five or six laps I did... Before I did this, the, my PB was an 8 minutes, 13 seconds, 0.7, I think. And the real-life GT3 lap record round here, if I'm not mistaken, is an 8 minute 09. And my lap didn't feel that bad. Like, it probably was a lot. There was a lot of time in it, but no doubt when, you know, people start sweating, setups get you know, better and better, people start to find exploits in the lines you can take and stuff like that. It's going to be... Oh, that's what happens when you go too deep in the carousel. You really want to be using that banked bit. Yeah, I think when everyone gets going on it, it's definitely going to be a lot quicker on the game as it is in real life, compared to what it is in real life, as, as usual, really. Be a few seconds quicker. Right, let's treat this like a quality lap and hope we don't run out of fuel. Jeez. 
Jesus Christ. We actually might run out of fuel. Right, monster curb coming up. There you go. Very unsure how to take that. Right, let's see what we can do on the launch life a bit. And clear air. Hit the barrier. It's a good start. Setup feels pretty nice now, though. Rotating quite nicely in the high speed. That's warmed up. Oof, bit out of position there. Wow. Just about kept it on there, but... You really want to be hooking up that curb before that section just to open it all up. As you can see, we have almost died several times in this video, but we have kept it on the road. And there's something to be said for that. But you can imagine for any big race that's coming up here, whether it's an eSports level, level race or a league race or whatever it is, it's going to take some serious prep. Just because there's so many corners to perfect. And, you know, it's quite a few different corners as well. So you have to compromise the setup to sort of suit or just you know a one size fits all type thing you know there's some corners where it's not going to feel perfect but overall it'll feel pretty decent for the, the entire lap right let's see if we can do the carousel properly this time bit better. Pull it, you got to try and keep the minimum speed up there as well by just holding a little bit of throttle on. Get out of position for the right. You've got to be so on it through this bit, just making sure you don't compromise the, the next corner. So if you compromise the next corner, you're just so... you lose so much time. Right, let's try and do this section now. We haven't got a million cars around us. We've got the big jump here. Then you've got to sacrifice this bit. Let's take this bit flat, or hopefully flat, just about. Get a bit of air there. Keep it pinned through here. Half feels like it's going to take off. Ooh. Lost the rear on the entry to there. get a little lift before you go in there and then pin it as soon as you see the exit let's see what top speed we can get with how much damage do we have i don't think we've got we've got 0.5 of damage so this is a fair pretty fair test in 21 air what we're we gonna hit it is uphill as well 276 but now we're going back down again 276, we'll probably pick up a little bit of speed in this bit. 278, 279, 280, 281, 282, 282. I'm running out of fuel. I felt the engine die there. A 
Come on. For the sake of the video, please. Well, I tell you what, we might make this. We're going to make it. Okay, the engine's fully died now. P7 is five seconds behind. That's P7. Ah, oh, we just missed P6. All right, so uh, good job, mate. You did your best. Bring it back to the pits. That was a disaster. An absolute disaster. But I think it shows off perfectly well the challenge of the Nordschleifer. If you go in unprepared, that happens. Yeah, that had a bit of everything, actually. So, after all that, P7, do you know what? I'll take that. Let's quickly see what happened with that AI crash. <laughs> so, it was one of these. It was that Audi. I think it was that Audi. He spun. Right, let's watch this maniac in action. Oh my god. Wait for it. There I am. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be sure to do some more serious content on the Nordschleife soon, like a track guide or maybe a race around here or something. A proper race. But for now, if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, sub to the channel. Uh, enjoy the Nordschleife for those who are going to download it today and play it. And I'll see you on a video very soon. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.